Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome. We're so happy to be here for our first live worship service since we went virtual on March 15th. Who'd have thought it had been six months? I want to remind you all that we'll continue to do the live service here on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and then continue to record the services for later viewing. Worship is available on our website and on YouTube. We're taking every precaution to protect those who attend the live worship service by social distancing, masks, hand sanitation, gloves. So please remember, too, that September is the Stewardship Month, and we would appreciate your faithful financial support so that we may continue our ministry during this challenging time. There's a wooden box on the table outside the door that is uh, got a cross on it, and that's where you put your offering, your contributions, and that stuff. The health professionals are urging everyone, especially seniors, to get their flu shots to keep from complicating matters regarding COVID-19. The high-dose vaccine is what they recommend for seniors, elderly available at many pharmacies and physicians' offices. So now let us joyfully worship God by singing our first hymn, Spirit of the Living God. We will sing through twice. Oh, hey. morning everyone it's good to see you there and we imagine seeing you at home this is our first Sunday as you know opening for live worship uh, since the we closed the doors for the coronavirus pandemic I want to share with you uh, some of our praises and also our concerns I for one am so grateful for the rain that we had we needed it desperately, and I understand more rain is in the forecast for this coming week, so that's great news. Also, there are a number of persons in our church and our extended church family who are on the road to recovery. We've heard of many of them, and I will not take time to share those names with you, but we are thanking God for all those wonderful answers to prayer. I do want to uh, share with you some of our concerns. Uh, we need to be continuing to pray for Barbara McClade. She continues to wrestle with severe back pain, and they're exploring several different treatments uh, for her situation. So please be in prayer for her. 
I uh, talked to Jean Andrews yesterday, and Jean, as you know, she's had a long bout with just a crippling arthritis, and she is not much better. So please continue those prayers. Uh, Carolyn Shoddy was uh, home and was doing so much better, but she had a low blood clamp, so she had to go back to the hospital for another transfusion. Uh, also, some of us are taking food to her during this time, so please continue to pray for her. I don't have any late reports on Bob Camp or Bill Williams, so I hope that they're holding their own. Uh, Mark Lechte as well. Chris Elliott, the Elliott's daughter, is uh, receiving rehab from her crippling stroke and is doing better from what I understand. I would appreciate your continued prayers for Reverend Rob Clopton, who is being diagnosed with advanced kidney cancer. He's undergoing treatments at MD Anderson. This is a man of God, folks. And <laughs> He would appreciate, and I would appreciate, and all of his family and friends would appreciate your prayers, Rob Clopton. Our son-in-law, Tony Troxell, uh, has been released from the VA hospital in Temple, and uh, he is suffering from various issues, including very severe AFib. And uh, he's home and working part-time as well, so thank you for those prayers. Uh, Natalie Steele, uh, Rick and Jan Steele's uh, daughter-in-law, uh, has re is recovering from cancer surgery. Uh, Fran Pontesso, living out at Point Venture, talked with her a day or so ago, and she's undergoing further tests at this time. Jean Hamer is going to have exploratory surgery tomorrow. So please be in prayer for Jean and for Dick as well. I visited with them at the home uh, yesterday. Received a word uh, from Jim Orr that his son Bob Orr has been diagnosed with osteomyelitis of the spine. It can be a potentially very serious condition. I believe he lives in San Antonio. Please be in prayer for him. Also, Jan Steele's sister, Joe Berry, had heart bypass surgery. So please be in prayer for Joe Berry. And we continue to pray for all those who are dealing with all the issues in school. Parents, teachers, students, it's quite a trial time, so please be in prayer for them, as well as everybody that's battling with the coronavirus of whatever capacity. The, the fires in California, now the state of Oregon, some Washington, it, it's just horrible, and you're getting all those reports, and we need to be lifting in prayer all those folks on the Pacific Coast. We continue to pray for our country and, and the upheavals, um, all the, the social interactions and and all of, the, all of the, the turmoil that's being created, not only in the political process, but also in the other very challenging situations in which we find ourselves. Let us now be in a moment of prayer as we seek the grace and glory of God. God of mercy, grace, and peace. Lord, we pray that during this time that tries our souls, you might use us as instruments of your grace. May we be sensitive to opportunities that you present us to serve others through the grace and power of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we continue to fumble with, with answers and with prayers, we ask you to hear the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now Bill Parcher and Lisa Weaver will bless us with grace alone.
Scripture lesson for today's sermon is 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. Oops. Paul writes, for this, is the will of, oops. for this is the will of God, your sanctification. The word of God, thanks be to God. Yes, part of one verse. Thank you, Bill, Lisa, thank you, Ed, thank you, uh, Cindy, thank all of you for being here. And there's three men that are our technicians today, including Pastor Chuck. So thank you, all of you, and appreciate you brave folks being here today on this first Sunday of our reopening. A husband came home after work one day, and he presented his wife with a bouquet of red roses. And he hugged her and said, honey, I love you. And she burst into tears. She said, what a day. She said, the washer broke. The baby fell out of his chair. And now you come home inebriated. <laughs> what a day. I think sometimes we're sort of like that uh, young wife and mother when it comes to God's grace. There's got to be a catch to it. It's too simple. It's too easy. All of us reason, and the world reasons, no one deserves God's grace. And that's really true. That's what the Bible says. It is a gift from God that is available to everyone who will accept it by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul said nobody qualifies. He said in in uh, Romans 3, 3, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, so we don't deserve it. Reformer John Wesley noted that grace, from his study, his experience, 
It occurs in three methods or rhythms which might be compared to a marriage. The first is what he called prevenient grace. It is the courtship period. It is that grace that goes before us where God woos us to himself. It appears as protecting grace. God protects us from harm. It appears as preventing grace. God prevents us from straying so far away from him. It is also preparing grace where God prepares our hearts to accept, to receive Jesus Christ. And after prevenient grace, there is justifying grace. It's the wedding ceremony. It's where we accept God's gift of grace through Jesus Christ for ourselves. Other words are saved, redeemed, justified by grace through faith. And the third form of grace is sanctifying grace. It is compared to the maturing of the marriage into a lifelong and mutually beneficial relationship. Sanctifying grace, folks, in short, is what follows after we have accepted Jesus Christ. This is the work of God in our lives for the rest of our lives. We Christians know that there's got to be something more after we receive Jesus. Uh, it is not the goal. It is a means to a greater goal. We all know that there is imperfection in our lives. We all need some work, don't we? None of us is perfect. The goal is not to accept Jesus Christ, but to become like Jesus Christ. Paul wrote in Romans 8, God has predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. Jesus' disciples, even though they were with him for over three years, folks, they all had imperfections. Peter was impulsive. Thomas was a doubter. James and John, known as the brothers of thunder, had fiery tempers. So if you have a hot temper, it's okay. And we all know about Judas. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing. They all needed work. The good news is that God assists us in this process of sanctification. And this is what our one half verse lesson is all about. God's will for us is our sanctification. The process of becoming more like Jesus Christ. Before John the Baptist baptized Jesus, he told the crowd that was coming to the Jordan River, he said, I baptize you in water for repentance, but the one that is coming after me, the one who is greater than I am, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And in Matthew 3, he says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He goes on to say that Jesus will separate the wheat from the chaff in our lives, that which is productive from that which is not productive. Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and fire, and it's that Holy Spirit fire that sets us on fire for God and purifies us from our imperfections. Now, there are several analogies in Scripture that relate to sanctification. One is the refiner's fire. You know, in the old days, metallurgists who wanted to purify precious metals like gold and silver, they would subject them to intense heat, and they would become liquid, and then he would remove the pure impurities from the surface. The fire of the Holy Spirit shows us our imperfections, and by the fire of God, those imperfections are removed. Another uh, indication of sanctification is in Jeremiah 18. The Word of God says, God is the potter, and we are the clay. And God, by his grace, wants us to see the impurities in our lives, and he wants to shape us to become the kind of persons that he has destined us to be. In John 15, Jesus says that God is the owner of the vineyard. And he said, I am the true vine, and everybody else, those who follow Jesus, we are the branches. And he said, God prunes us. He cuts off those non-productive parts of us that we might bear fruit, live more productive lives, somewhat characteristic of the life of Jesus Christ. This is what Paul refers to as the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. 
Sanctification, folks, is synonymous with holiness, purity, and godliness. It has been observed that justification is what God does for us. Sanctification is what God does in us. And sanctification, we must always remember, is we don't immediately arrive. It is a lifelong process of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. I've seen several t-shirts that address sanctification. You remember that one? It was real popular several years ago. A lot of Christians wore it. And some people were looking for an excuse, perhaps. And the t-shirt said, please be patient with me. God ain't finished with me yet. I love that. And then I saw a button also addressing the same idea, Con Christian under construction. I need that button and I need that t-shirt. I might be able to get away with a little bit more. The word of God in scripture by the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin and convinces us of God's truth. The writer of the Hebrews said, God disciplines those whom he loves that they might share in his holiness. God sometimes disciplines us, kind of helps us rectify some of those impurities that we can live more Christ-like. There's an old story about a man in a small rural town, and he was arrested for stealing sheep. He was a sheep thief. And his punishment, they branded his forehead with the two letters S and T, which stood for sheep thief. And he had to wear, of course, that brand for the rest of his life. And he was so ashamed of himself. He was discerned, determined to be a better person. And so he did everything that he could to gain the trust of the townsfolk. Every time there was a community project, he volunteered. Every time a neighbor needed help, he was right there. He did everything that he could to be a better person. Many years later, a man visited that town. He happened to see this old bent over man shuffling along in the street. And in the midst of his wrinkles, he saw what looked like two letters on his forehead. They said S and T. He asked a young woman, he said, I've seen this old man walking down your street. And it looks like he has two letters on his board, S and T. What's the story there? And she was very young. She says, you know, I don't even know anymore. That's an old story that goes way back. But those letters must stand for saint because everybody in town says he's the best person in town. Folks, that is sanctification transformation of a life to become more like Jesus Christ. The hymn we're going to sing when I conclude this sermon, and I'm just about there, I think says it so beautifully. It's a reference to that Jeremiah verse. God's the potter, we're the clay. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, and I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I am waiting, yielded and still. God's will for us is our sanctification. I believe this is the word of God for today. Amen. And now we're going to sing, Have Thine Own Way. If you would care to stand.
never went to church. And then Jim became very seriously ill. And then uh, mutual friends of ours, Steve and Elise uh, Ernst, are good friends of hers. And they have been attending our church before we closed for, for the COVID. And uh, when Jim became very ill and was close to the end of his life, uh, they suggested maybe I would come and spend some time with them, which I did. And I had the honor of carrying on his uh, memorial service in Temple, Texas, back in April. And not long afterward, Judy said, I want to be part of this church. I want to join this church. I want to be involved in this church. I said, wow, we've got a live one here. <laughs> and we're not even having church except on the TV. And it is our custom as a congregational church, you know, when someone joins that we officially ratify their membership as a congregation. I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take you in. And, and then when we are back open again, I'll introduce you. So that's the story. So she has been a member uh, for uh, some weeks. And she's going to be a good one. And when our ladies' Bible study gets back together, the ladies' group and other things that we'll be doing as a church, uh, we're going to get this lady involved. And I hope you get to know Judy. She's delightful. And she lives just down the street on Highland, on Highland Lakes Drive, not too far from our church. So Judy, it's so good to have you. She comes from another tradition. And of course, we recognize your profession of faith and your baptism. We ask about membership. Will you support this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? And your answer is, I will. Amen. Amen. And now we like the congregation to accept her officially as a member of the church, the life and faith of Lakeside Christian Fellowship. Will you receive Judy Guthrie into the ministry of this church? Say amen. 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 I'm not even going to ask for a name. <laughs> now, you know, I don't know if we have a quorum or not, but I think it's those present and worshiping are the quorum. For this <laughs> and so, Judy, it's so good to have you. And uh, we'll be seeing more of her. And I asked her to take her mask off so we could get a good look at her. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. God bless you. And although we're not hugging and touching right now, I'm going to ask her to join me at the conclusion of this service out in front. So you can at least come by and say hi. God bless you. Good to have you. Okay? Fantastic. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Blessing. And yes, now we have a, a new sending forth. And, and my benediction is, you want to know what the will of God is? According to our lesson today, it's your sanctity. Jesus is Lord.